can these 3D printed minis stand up against the big boys? Find out this week on Short Rest Studios. Hey there adventurers, welcome back to Short Rest Studios. I'm Judd and this week we're going to talk about some 3D printed miniatures from Yasashi Kyojin Studio on Patreon. They have 317 designs, 7 busts, and 100 pieces of scatter, including a range of animals, according to their Patreon. And I am super excited to get to review those for you this week. So let's dive in. But remember, hang around for the end when I give you the final verdict. Yasashi Kyojin has 5 membership levels on their Patreon, ranging from $2 a month to $25 a month. Now, the top tiers are merchant level, and they're sold out, but you get tons of great value throughout the membership tiers. I picked the $5 pre-supported level, and for that, I get Google Drive access to the entire collection, which includes individually supported 32 and 54 millimeter minis. I get Chidu Box and STL files. I get stat blocks, custom stat blocks for the minis. Tons of great value. You can check out everything that's available on their Patreon. I'm gonna to link to it down below. And if you're curious and you wanna check some of their stuff out before you go and make the purchase, you can always log on to Thingiverse where they have a few of their unsupported miniatures available that you can download for free to print and test them out. I actually printed one of the figures that I'm gonna show you here today a while back and painted it and everything and then I knocked it over and accidentally broke it when we were playing D&D one night. So, all right, so here's the rundown of the minis I printed. No, I did not print all 317 available designs, but I did pick a few that I thought were cool and I printed those out. The first one I printed was a Wraith, which I, I love this design uh, and I printed it because I printed it once before, like I said, and I accidentally broke it. So I'm looking forward to getting to paint this guy again because he's really cool, but I'll throw up a photo of my original painted version that I did previously. But then I also printed a Beholder, uh, which is a pretty uh, vicious looking design. I printed this troll, which I really love, uh, the broken tusk and the little stones on his on his back or whatever the heck those are. Uh, I printed a, a Myconid. You know, he had several different Myconids, which I thought were really neat, but I wanted to pick one that, you know, looked the most like a mushroom so that you guys wouldn't look at it and go, what the heck is that? And I also printed a Manticore, which I actually printed for our D&D &D game that we're playing right now. And I really love this design too. And finally, <laughs> I printed the Shark and Bear just because it's ridiculous and I thought it was hilarious. So it's a bear with sharks for arms. How could you go wrong printing that? Oh my gosh, I almost forgot. I told you there were free unsupported files available on Thingiverse, and I did print that Wraith a, a long time ago, which I downloaded from Thingiverse, but there's also this cool owlbear that I printed too, and I painted it, and so here's a uh, hopefully a nice little shot of my owlbear that I painted a while back, which is also one of Yasashi Kyojin's designs. Now let's dig into the pros and cons. Starting with the pros, now take this with a grain of salt because these are fantasy miniatures. They're not real, okay guys? These things are not real. Don't worry about being attacked by a manticore in your sleep tonight, okay? But I like the realism of these designs. And what I mean is you see a lot of designs that are more cartoonish, kind of that hero scale, like exaggerated features and things like that and those are great those are really cool i have no problem with those in fact i love reaper minis which tend to go in that direction but sometimes these things can get a little bit too cartoony and i really like that these feel more grounded in reality i mean take a look at the shark and bear for example Yes, it's ridiculous, but it looks like a real bear and the arms look like real sharks. They're not cartoonish features and, and all those kind of things. That They are designed based on reality. And I love that. I think it works really well, especially given the other things that I'm gonna list as pros here. Here's pro number two. These designs have a great balance of detail versus paintability. And what I mean by paintability is that some minis have such fine, small details that it can be really challenging to paint, if not downright difficult. These are not 
difficult to paint. They have some beautiful details that are very realistic feeling, but they're not so detailed that they're a huge challenge to paint. I found the Wraith, for example, to be a lot of fun. I mean, let's look at the detail on that figure. He's got these shreds of fabric that form his cloak and the, the, the tiny details of his bony hands, but it's nothing that makes it really, really hard to paint. I mean, you can get the colors that you want in the right places pretty easily with this model. And I feel like most of his designs are that way. There's lots of great detail, but they're not super tiny. Uh, a lot of the detail you can kind of cover with a single color, like the owl bear. I mean, his fur is really detailed, but you don't have to worry about getting in there and, and painting all those little details. You can just kind of cover it with a color and, and use a wash or something like that, and it will really make those details pop. It's those kind of details, and they're just easy to paint. I, I didn't find them challenging at all. In fact, I really enjoyed painting them, especially that Wraith, man. Uh, that's one of, actually one of my favorite uh, paint jobs that I've done, and it was pretty early on in my painting career. Look also at the beholder's teeth. I mean, he's got these tusks sticking out of the side of his face, and, and he's got all these teeth pointing out at different angles and things, and it's a really cool detail, um, but it's not ridiculous. You, you look at something like that, and you might think it's gonna be hard to paint, but generally speaking, teeth are, are actually, for me at least, a lot easier than I expected them to be. These details are great, and I have found them to be pretty easy to paint, so that's definitely a pro. The third pro is that these are some really well-supported minis. Now, in my last review of 3D printed miniatures, when I talked about Mammoth Factory, I, I made mention of the fact that there was one model in particular that had so many supports that I almost gave up trying to remove them. And it was pointed out to me by a viewer that there's a reason that they put so many tiny supports on these models because they want to make sure that they can be printed on a variety of machines and like I get that like I, I know that I knew that going in that was just kind of my experience of Mammoth Factory and it's been my experience of Loot Studios also I the first Loot Studios miniature that I printed was a ship and a small ship a little you know little model of a ship and it had a ton of supports on it man and I was flabbergasted like I thought I, I was almost ready to give up in the very beginning these models the beholder had the most supports and they were super easy to remove I felt like it was the right amount of supports it was still a lot I wasn't concerned about it having flat parts or falling apart but I basically took the beholders body and twisted the supports off the bottom. Once I broke a few around the edges, I was able to just twist it right off. It came off really easy. I had no trouble with any of these. Now, they've got 317 designs. Some of them might be a little harder to take the supports off of. Some of them might have a ton more supports, but all of the ones that I printed, all six or six of these that I printed, were pretty easy to remove the supports from, and I didn't have a single failure. So that's definitely a pro. And I would say that that's a pro that puts the, the, these a step above Mammoth Factory and Loot Studios in the sense that there were plenty of supports. They weren't hard to remove. All right, now let's talk about the cons. And I gotta be honest, I racked my brain trying to come up with some cons and there's only really one that I could think of. And it's not even really fair, but I'm gonna go ahead and tell you what it is. My one con, for Yasashi Kyojin Studio is a lack of variety. And you're like, man, are you crazy? There's 317 designs. I, I get that. I get that. And I see that. But I felt like I would go look for things and they weren't there. And things that, you know, I thought would be maybe obvious additions from time to time. I mean, there were, you know, all the really obvious things. I mean, there were kobolds and goblins and and a dragon and things like that. And like I said, I, I recognize that this isn't really fair to say that this is a con because this is a single designer uh, supported on Patreon, a growing collection. I believe that this collection is going to keep growing with some more fantastic designs. I mean, there are new designs all the time and you get to vote on the new designs. I mean, that, that's pretty cool. I think they're going to grow to the point that you're gonna be able to find whatever you want. 
Hey, if you're getting some value out of this video, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button down below. That helps this video get out to more viewers and helps our channel grow. And if you want to keep up with what's going on here at Short Rest Studios, just hit that battle axe underneath and subscribe to the channel. Now, let's get on to the verdict. I love this collection. I love it. It's awesome. Yasashi Kyojin Studio has beautiful designs that I think rival the big boys. And when I say the big boys, I'm, I'm thinking like uh, Loot Studios, uh, Lord of the Print, some of those companies that are putting out just some really fantastic designs. I believe these designs rival those easily. These are some of my favorite designs that I've seen. The paintability is fantastic. These are easier to paint than most of the Loot Studios minis I've tried to paint. I haven't tried to paint a ton of them, but you, you get a feel for that. You know, you get a feel for how easy they're going to be to paint, and I think these are generally really paintable. These minis are super affordable. Five bucks a month, you get the whole collection. You're not going to print the whole collection probably one time, but there's a new one every month. You get to help choose what the next one's going to be. I don't think you can go wrong with that. I mean, especially if you are really the kind of person who wants to support uh, an artist who is trying to make his own way, then it's definitely affordable. It's definitely worth the money. I believe Yasashi Kyojin Studio can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the big boys any day of the week. And that is my final verdict. Well, adventurers, Again, I hope that you've enjoyed this episode of Short Rest Studios. Do me a favor and hit the like button down below. Hit the battle axe to subscribe to the channel. And join me next week for another adventure on Short Rest Studios. Yasashi... Yeah.